Hey Gauchos, and welcome back to another episode of UCSB TV, the okayest, most semi-consistent show ever filmed through Zoom. I'm Hannah, and this is your gentle reminder to apply to join our team. We're looking to fill all positions, and we do not want to leave Maddie stranded next year. The link to apply will be in the description of this video. Now, on with the show. This week, we're talking to some grad photographers in Isla Vista about their work, how you can book them, and what advice they have for you folks at home who have to take your photos yourself. With that being said, let's hand it off to Maddie and the photographers. Okay, well, Sunny, tell us a little bit about how you got into photography. So I guess I've always been really interested in the digital media art. Um, so I was like in a film program when I was in high school. And so I like got to learn a lot on like how the cameras work and whatnot. Um, I was mostly interested in like videography, but um, just for fun, like me and my friends would go out and like go on like little photo shoots and whatnot. So I just like continued that in college. And yeah, that's a little bit of how um, I started photography. I started off like the third year of my undergrad here. I'm an alumni class 19. And so at some point when I started working with the, the cheer team as a student trainer, two of my cheerleaders were actually portrait photographers themselves. And I first got exposed to their work and I was like, whoa, that's just like nuts. I want to be able to create something like that and they they were willing to take me on a little a tutorial shoot where i get to just kind of stand by and watch them do their thing and it kind of just blew my mind and at the same time i happened to be taking uh a, well, i'm about i was a biosite major and i happened to be taking a course of physics that quarter and i was learning about the like physics of light and lenses and all that stuff and it totally fascinated me having all that come together at once it kind of just felt like a sign i was like you know what I got all these student loans anyway, why not use a refund check and just dive into a camera and just kind of go from there. And so I started asking my friends, like, yo, would you mind if I get some practice in, take some photos of you? And it kind of just went from there. And YouTube, lots of YouTube. I started shooting early in high school and it was just because my dad used to collect cameras. And so he would give me some cameras just to play with when I was, you know, like in middle school and stuff. And then. In high school, I was just shooting for fun and people told me that I had an eye and I was like post a lot on Instagram and yeah and then I was like I was just doing it for fun and everything and I was shooting people because I guess it was just something I attracted it was like I love shooting people um, but then I realized so many people were asking me to take photos for them that around my junior year I started charging people um, just like a very low price just you know get it going as a business and yeah, that pretty much just like was like the start of like my business career for photography. So what do you offer when you're doing a grad shoot? Like what packages, pictures, stuff like that? So usually I do a one or two hour session. Um, I do like discounts by like the addition of uh, people or individuals. Any session that I do is going to include individual and group photos. Um, I allow people to tag in. Like if you wanted, like if your family was like coming by to visit or they were your ride there, they wanted to hop in on a few photos. I just like add those in, no, like no additional price or anything. Um, I'm also an athlete. So when we're just like standing around waiting for like the, the let's say the Henley sign or something, I'll do like a quick backflip or something. Just to, just to keep things moving a little bit, keep the energy up. That's what I try to do. I try to bring my, my uh, cheerful, like energetic personality into it and help them feel a little less stressed because not everyone has all that experience behind a camera or in front of a camera. And I know it could be a little nerve wracking. So I just try to bring my personality into it and make everything as chill and as fun as possible. My um, grad package includes one hour uh, with 25 edited images and then um, like however outfit changes and um, that you can fit in that hour. Um, that works for me. And then usually like one to two locations, but like, let's say we go to Henley Gate, we can like definitely fit in the beach and the cliffs like right there. So that just kind of depends. And then um, that's like for one person, but then I have done like groups as well. And so um, because of like COVID reasons, um, I have, been like restricting bigger groups but like that also kind of depends because of like vaccinations are coming out and so yeah if you're interested just like come talk to me anytime stuff like that yeah so every year it's been the same package deal except for this year because this year 
I'm traveling a lot. I have much less availability and I'm getting a lot of um, requests. And so I had to charge higher because I'm commuting. That was the only extra charge that I did was mainly the commute. But usually the package fee is two hours, um, $100 for two hours of shooting. You get all the unedited photos and uh, you get 10 photos that of your choice. You just send me the file names and I'll edit them and then send them back. So you get 10 fully edited photos, but you'll always receive all of the unedited as well. Um, and usually, yeah, I give them two hours, but most times it won't even go the full two hours. It's kind of just for like, if Penley has a really long line. Um, so like, you know, just give that buffer time. Um, and as unlimited locations, unlimited outfit changes, um, if it's, and then the prices kind of just change off of um, how many people, so that's for one person, person, but if there's two people, it's actually $85 a person, but they're sharing the two hours. Um, and, and it goes down from there, like three people, $75 an hour, four people, uh, $65 an hour. So it's just kind of like, if it's a group, then it's just like different. Like I have to create like a modified price. But if it's just one person, then it's, yeah, it's 100 bucks for two hours. You get all the photos, you get all the changes in the locations. Like, I'm like, I don't really care. Like, I've seen people charge like 300, 400, and I'm like, it makes sense. But like, for me, it's not about the money. I just want to have a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's like, whatever you want to do with your two hours, go ahead. I'm just here to help. Mm -hmm. So when you are doing a grad photo shoot, what's kind of the most exciting moment for you to capture? Or what's something you look forward to in every mm -hmm. shoot? Yeah, I think I, I just really appreciate like being able to take grad photos for people because first of all, like I think just getting to meet um, other like UCSB students that I would not have been able to meet otherwise, like through this opportunity. I think that's like really exciting, um, just like meeting new people and getting to connect with them. And also like it's just such an honor being able to like capture their graduation. Uh, well, one thing that I do like to ask is I, I like to give people the opportunity to sort of think about where on campus they've like made the most memories during their time here. I know that's a little weird now because of COVID, but like I feel like I can do like a good job of capturing those memories for them in the form of like the art that I create. And so I really like doing shoots that are kind of like out of the ordinary. So like sometimes uh, people would ask me, oh, can you do a shoot in the library? Like with the like freaking what's it called with yerbs and coffee and stuff <laughs> and stuff that like kind of incorporates their personality into it where they ask like take pictures with their dog or if their family could jump in for a couple shots i really like those moments because i know that like this like the photos i'm taking right now that i'm looking through my lens has the potential to go up on somebody's wall for the rest of their life one where their parents are going to see it and they're just going to smile because their kid has been going to this school and paying all this money to help them get through it and it just feels good to be able to create for something like that. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, so for me, the biggest thing I always tell my uh, clients is to be as comfortable as possible. So sometimes like I'll try to like ride with them there so we can like talk and like get to know each other better first or like if we're waiting in line for Henley Gate, I'll just like try to get to know my clients better. I do not like uh, posing my models. I always try to tell them like, I know how to pose people and I can give like slight tips and like show you people like what to do and stuff, but I will never be like, tilt your chin this way, tune up a little bit, turn this, because then you're just a robot and you don't look natural. And so like, it's not even like, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. It's like, I've been doing this for so many years and still the best advice I could give for any photographer that's shooting people is try to let them be as natural as possible. And if that naturalness for someone is still uncomfortable, you can help them, you know, break into it sometimes I'll have people like take a shot before you know like sometimes <laughs> if they're of the age that's definitely like my favorite thing about grad shoots is like seeing people get comfortable dance around have fun create their own poses and every single one is just unique on its own because everyone's so different you know and I think that's what I love the most about grad shoots they're so unique do you have any tips for graduates who may be at home and not in Isla Vista who still want to get like a grad shoot experience I think that the best thing you can do is get some nice photos because if you're not going like if you have your stole your your gown or cap or whatever combination of those that you chose to uh, buy into you might as well create a memory out of it because like a lot of people who uh who don't want to like invest in like the cap and gown i personally wouldn't recommend it i never used it after i like no it was a waste of like but um the stole i love the stole like i have it posted up on my like in my office um 
but I think that uh, really trying to incorporate what your undergraduate or graduate experience was at UCSB is like the biggest thing you can do for your grad photos. It doesn't always have to be through a, like an expensive photographer. It can be through your iPhone. If you got a friend with a camera who wants to practice, like just get something that you can uh, like physically hold and remember by. It's like obviously super different being like not being an IB, but I think the beauty of photography is that um, you can kind of like pinpoint a certain area. So like, let's say you're at a park, but um, there's like so many different park, different locations at a park that um, you can like make things look like you're at a completely different location. Um, so I would say just like paying attention to the, the little things and like maybe playing around with your phone, um, like going to a certain location and then it might look completely different than like a few steps next to that. So yeah, that's my little tip. I graduated during the pandemic as well. I honestly would say like, make a trip out to campus at one point. You have like four months, just sometime in those four months, just try your best to like get there and get that shoot in. Uh, if not, then honestly, like I've had people who graduated last year that are just now starting to take their grad photos, even though they already graduated last year. Um, so honestly, there's no rush. I think the only rush is like, if you want to announce and post, like, of course, like get that in within the next four months. Um, I would plan ahead because I think like the best time to post about these things and wanting to share, like make announcement cards is around June. So like I would plan ahead because the line for Henley gets like exponentially longer and busier and the fields in that area get really muddy and gross and the flowers disappear because they die. So I would try to get there before uh, mid-May through like mid-June because that's when it's like packed and a disaster and photos aren't that great. I mean, they'll still look good if you have a good photographer, but like, you know, to get the best quality, I would say like try to aim for before May or like wait until like after the whole season's done. So where can we check out your work? So I have a website, photosbybolden.com. It is not as updated as my Instagram, though, photosbybolden. I have all of my most recent grad work on there, but you can also find like my sort of top picks of grad photos from 2020 prior on my website as well. So those are like my main two portfolio sites. My website is at sunnyparkphoto.com. So S-U-N-N-Y-P-A-R-K photo.com. And then my Instagram is the same, sunnyparkphoto. Um, yeah, feel free to check me out. Um, shoot me DMs or like emails if you have any questions. And, and yeah, that's it. Uh, I have my portfolio online. It's just um, UGH last UGH, UGH, U-G-H hyphen L-A-S-K hyphen U-G-H dot com slash grad. <laughs> thanks, Maddie. And thanks to everyone for sitting down with us today. We appreciate your time and make sure to check out their work and book them. Thanks for watching. Remember to send in your applications and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. One more piece of advice is yeah. definitely to do the champagne shots last.